also for Mark Lobonner, TigerFitness.com, alongside my man. How are we doing, guys? You, you didn't say your name. <laughs> I always assume. Uh, my name is Bryce Beal. I'm the Director of Sports Performance at Legacy at Carbon. All right, cool. Now that we get that out of the way, let's talk about box squats. If you follow us on social media, if you follow Legacy at Carbon, that's at Legacy at, the word at Carbon. Carbon on Instagram, which I encourage you all to follow, you'll see that we have a lot of really um, differing groups from eight-year-old football players to 17-year-old football players to 15-year-old soccer players, all box squatting. And you'll also see us do a lot of heavy loaded slant board goblet squats using a beyond exaggerated range of motion due to the heel elevation. So we wanted to kind of talk about and, and also give credit before we start um, to Laura Phelps, as well as the great Louis Simmons, God rest his soul, about why we utilize box squats with athletes. Yeah. And let's start from the beginning. Talk about the eight year olds, nine year olds, 10 year olds, yeah. 11 year olds, where I love box squatting. I love free squatting. I love everything about it. But the box squat for our younger kids is just a reminder of where their positioning is supposed to be, how they're actually supposed to be able to sit down in the box squat, how we want them exactly how Laura Phelps wants it more specifically. Yeah. Um, and that way it's a, it's a easier way to teach kids and load kids um, at that point in time, because let's be honest, kids are not comfortable with the bar. They are not comfortable sit uh, free squatting just with the bar. They start to freak out physiologically and like central nervous system wise, mm -hmm. they start to freak out. So putting a box down for them allows us to express the load and movement we want. And it makes it a lot easier on the kids. Now, what about you? You can go. Well, the learning curve too, like a lot of people ask why we do hex bar deadlifts. One is there's less wrist potential, but the other is the ability to, to actually progress through loading is much higher than if I had someone pitched forward with this conventional deadlift with a box squat as well. You know, with, for example, Preston, we just got into box squatting, been trying to teach him the conventional squat, which there's a lot of issues in coordination in foot placement, where to stop, where to start. Yep. You got the butt wink. There's a lot of things going on. We literally started box squatting two weeks ago. He did, no, yeah, he did 95 the first time. Second time he went up to, I believe, 135. And he got 205 pounds in two weeks. So the progression of load. And at the end of the day, what are we doing with athletes? We're making them less likely to get injured. Because again, if a kid can squat or pick up a heavy weight, let's say 300 pounds without valgus, is he more or less likely to get injured than a kid whose knees cave in just supporting his own body weight? That's number one. Number two is what is speed? Speed is generating force against the ground. What are deadlifts doing in a hex bar stance? Generating force against the ground. What is a squat doing? Generating force against the ground. So however I can get a kid to express force through the ground, through their foot, Pushing against the ground, it will lead to better increases in speed and, and less likelihood of injury through their sport. Yep, and well, and even with, we'll go off of Preston, with the back squat, we've also loaded the front squat, um, and we did zombie squat, so arms straight out, and that was to a box, then we did regular front squat. And just getting kids to learn that position in mm -hmm. general is hard enough because they're just not built in the upper body to hold a bar. Yes. Um, so being able to do that for kids, like younger kids, so mm -hmm. your kids at home, if they want to know how to do it, you can just send them to us in Nashville. Yeah. I said easy way to do it. Yeah, just take a week vacation, come to Nashville, and we will show you how to train your kids. It's something we're going to be doing a lot of, get a lot of requests for it. And again, we're 20 minutes from, Na from downtown Nashville, Broadway Street. There's no reason why you can't take a family vacation, spend two hours a day at Legacy, and let us take the guesswork out of it. We don't want your kids getting injured. Um, you see it at, I see it at export all the time when I lived in Illinois. You see and, it all the time every day. Yeah. God bless their hearts, but you don't see it as much here. The parents just ignore their kids. Um, you just have their kids run around the gym, just posing all the time. Um, but no, nonetheless, what would happen is you'd have a dad who doesn't know how to train kids and he just start with squats and keep in mind, Preston's 10. He's been doing a variation of the squat since he was six years old. 
So again, he's 10, he's been doing it for four years and we're still not perfect. So with kids, you need regressions and regression means a regression for a squat, I would consider a plank and a goblet squat. Yep. A regression for the deadlift, I would consider a wall, wall facing, facing deadlift. deadlift. Which everybody starts on, whether you're a, whether you're a, I just started training a, a, an athletic uh, CEO nearby, um, an adult, 34 years old. And I didn't just put, he's like, he's deadlifted before. He has a whole setup in his, uh, in his home because nah, it's cares. Brentwood. And still, we had to start with wall facing deadlifts to be able to cue him and fix whatever form issues he had before. So I don't care if you're two years old or 20 years old or 80 years old you're starting in a regression. So the problem is these parents don't know the regressions. They don't know how to progress their kids. And that's when you end up getting injuries. And then we get a bad fucking, um, a bad mark on us because there's an injured kid from lifting weights. Well, I knew Billy and little Timmy and little Timmy and Billy, they both got injured because they squatted and they, they slipped a disc in their back, which is highly unlikely. Kids are very hard to injure at that age. But I've seen it yep. and it upsets me. And then you see these wahoos around town who have no idea what they're doing, loading kids, have no idea how to train kids. And and then you have a, a, this dumb program where they have a letter and a number in their name and they suck. So you take your kids, these alleged professionals, and all you got is a bunch of cookie cutter, um, just, just, just mundane elementary BS. And we just keep taking all of them. Yeah, I, I'll take, look, man. So I look at it like I'm doing a service. We're doing a service to, to, to society because there's a lot of, there's a lot of organizations uh, masquerading around as youth training facilities when in reality all they are is a business model and yeah i'm gonna be our business model them any day of the week but also we're gonna make your kids bigger faster stronger and less likely to get injured period well and that and let's i mean we can progress that in a hundred yeah. different ways so let's progress the box squat so talk about squat. back to box squat. talking about the box squat for our older athletes so we had what do you do that day? 535? No. Oh my God. Six or, no, 605 or 535? It was 605. He did 535 with me. I had to go, I had to leave. And then next thing you know, I see on Instagram, dude, I'm like, doc, that's definitely all he's going to do today. So, um, and that was literally actually in the video, but we have a couple kids that we go through the box squat variation, obviously same setup, same principles that we just talked about, but getting kids to understand whether to load at a low box, a 90 degree box or a high box and everyone can come at me for going above 90 degrees because you have no absolute idea of what you're actually talking about and why we're doing it. So, and we'll go about that, is I put him above 90 degrees. The reason is he is a lineman. He moves in a five-yard box, right, forward, backward, side to side, and his change of direction is predominantly in that range of motion. And it's not like we're not loading him through. There's other ways so let's say you're going in a box squat and you're going above 90 degrees. Let's say you're going at slightly above 90. Um, there, you can exercise through that full range. What I'll do is the warm up movement will be heavy, heavy, heavy goblet or front squats going ATG, yep. utilizing a slant board. You'll notice we utilize the slant board a lot because it gives you not just range of motion, it gives you an exaggerated, beyond natural, uh, a, a supernatural range yeah. of motion. And I like that because if you can move safely through that range of motion, you can move safely through any natural yeah. range of motion. Yes, I, you hit that on that. I, yeah. I, and and so, so I, I really get excited seeing kids do that. So what I'll do, for example, with my son, who has issues with figuring out his ankle mobility, mm -hmm. kids, you know, kids box squatting 290 degrees, 205 pounds at 10 years old. Okay, but he also has, I believe it's a, the green the green one, the 70 pound kettlebell yep. that he's gonna hold out in front of him, stabilizing with his core, with his arms. Upper body's a limiting factor for children always. It's always you know slows yep. to come up because these are kids who played soccer and a bunch of leg dominant sports. Yep. They weren't walking on their hands. So their legs are gonna be stronger. So while we're doing the goblet squats with the kettlebell, we're also able to express some upper body power and also in, engage their core. But at the same time, we're able to move through that full range of motion. So if you look at, what's that guy's name? Joel Seedman? Yes. Okay, the guy's an idiot. Um, and I mean that with all due respect. And Lane Norton agrees with me. He did a video just shitting on him. Um, so his problem is he never works through full range of motion. There's a time and a place. But I believe that a lot of your movements... Um, especially in the movement prep, pillar preps part of your training, um, where you're doing the, you know, different uh, athletic drills, the different mini, okay, those should be done full range of motion. Yep. 
And then you have your other ancillaries, full range of motion. I'm not going to do a half band pull, right? But when it comes time to load, it's okay to utilize a thing like the box. And if you look at even in a powerlifting where they're going below 90 degrees, they conjugate does not call for anything but box squats till like the last four weeks. Yep. So, that's- and that's for lifting. So if I'm trying to, and also squat university and he, uh, um, you guys probably, he's one of the most popular channels on Instagram. He was on Kabuki and- with us. Yes, he was. Um, he was doing static where um, uh, over, over um, what is it called? Um, lock, basically walkouts. You put more weight than you can lift on the bar. Yeah. And pe- you walk uh, out pe- and you hold it for 15 seconds. Yeah, uh, then you walk back in. Uh, I can't think of the word. P and uh, it's not P and F. Yeah, but, but anyway, so basically you're doing the, the walkout part of the squat. Yeah. Well, so what sensor- that does is it's getting your nervous system engaged and, and, and able to handle the heavier loads before you actually take it into a squat. So the theory is if I can hold 1,000 pounds on my back, I should be able to squat 500. Mm-hmm. Yep. And with the box squat, you're basically doing um, a, a squatted version of the static hold. And, and with box squat, you do cool things. Like you do a, you do a negative, like we're doing five-second negatives on, the, on, the, on the, the box squat. And the beauty of a five-second negative, you're getting the eccentric portion because a lot of our kids need to put on muscle. They also need to learn how to decelerate. Yes. Deceleration, that's another thing we hit on big on our Kabuki presentation. Deceleration is where injuries happen most of the time. So if we're able to teach them deceleration, so while we want to avoid eccentric during the season a lot in order to prevent them from being sore for their competition, Mm -hmm. in the off-season, I want heavy eccentrics. Yep. I want them to be able, if they can... Take a 600-pound squat slowly. That's just like slowing down on the field um, to your muscle and your brain. Your yep. muscles, they can't count. They can't do no. math. They don't know. They just know there's a lot of weight, and I'm moving it slowly. So when you go to decelerate on the field, your body is more neurologically and physiologically apt to handle that. Yep, and you can, I mean, obviously, you can pair it with anything. So, like, if you have seen our social media, you can look at the heavy box squat being paired like eccentrically, that is being paired with a heavy ass sled push, yeah. right? Like I think he had on six plates in you. Yeah. So that was, I don't even, I can't do the math. That's a lot 4, of weight. Pounds. Yeah. That, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. You need to watch. <laughs> um, so being able to do that and then put it into an athletic context after that. So like you can pair the box squat with anything, right? Like, especially when it comes to, athletic movements if it is at 90 or above 90 where you can start facilitating different methods within it to increase vertical to increase speed to increase your elasticity you can do a whole bunch of things that's why the box squad is so great for kids and youth athletes is because we can find the niche that we really want to dive into for four weeks and be able to facilitate it towards that and also when you're actually <clears throat> pausing on a box you're, you're taking away the rubber band effect. And the rubber band effect is the bottom of the squat where your muscle elongates and then it contracts. And that adds a lot of momentum to your lift. So you might be going downwards, but the rebound effect up. So we're actually starting from a base, kind of like difference between bouncing a barbell off your chest on bench press and doing a Bust. pause rep. So it does actually increase the degree of difficulty, um, thus engaging more muscle fibers and, and again, getting them ready for that heavy load. But again, the last thing I want to do is pull a Joel Seedman, who allegedly trains a bunch of professionals and more power to him. He's selling a book for $300. God bless America and capitalism. But at the end of the day, I, I don't like what he does. I do like that he's loading people. I do like that he's promoting strength training. But I don't like the fact that he's saying that full range of motion movements it's are absolute. not optimal. Yeah. I do believe that there is a place, though, like... You can read, I, I have this theory, like even though I have a ton of books behind me, I have boxes of books, I'm a reader. Um, the dumbest book I've ever read, the stupidest, most wasted time book, I've taken at home at least one thing out of, it could be a thousand pages, it could be like a yep. sentence that was worth learning. And so what Joel does, and I didn't mean this to be a shit on Joel Seedman video, is he is promoting maximal loads um, but I think he even his box squat is literally like, like 14 degrees. Yeah. It's, it's not it's insane. It's literally like a quarter squat that you make fun of someone for doing. But I think there's a time and place though. Yeah. Our kids will go slightly above 90, but 
I think that what we do learn from someone like Joel, and you can learn a lot from him, is he's obviously getting some results. Yep. He absolutely but is. Every exercise program will get results. But people aren't paying us to get results. They're paying us to create monsters. Yes. Beasts. I thought you and that's what he's been saying all week. I thought I'd get it. it yep. Everybody's been like, we're creating monsters. We're creating beasts. I'm like, okay. okay. I mean, but it, it, this all plays into it. And Mark kind of said it best is, you know, you can take a page from everyone's book. Yeah. I thought, there, well, there's, there's, yeah, there's, it was funny because we had a, uh, we're getting equipment for our new space and uh, our partner's like, well, how much weights do you need? Bryce, like we need one, one, 100 to one fifties. He goes, well, why? Well, I'm creating beasts. I'm creating monsters. It's, but, uh, if you go back and you can look on my Instagram legacy performance for the last what nine years, you can find the strongest kids in the state of Illinois yeah. and the Midwest. And now you're going to see literally the same thing happen here, yeah. but even better. Even and better. We have better facilities. We have better. Honestly, we have kids who, you know, well, I mean, St. Charles isn't exactly a poor area, but let's just say that Brentwood and Franklin people, People can afford to feed their kids right, yeah. and people can afford to, you know, they can afford extra training. Yeah. Um, and that's what it comes down to because, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, hiring a strength coach, it's if it's if it's too cheap, it's bad. If it's too expensive, it's, you know, it's like one of those yeah. where, where you there know, should be a book on that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, How to hire a strength coach. It's, it's really tough because, you know, you look at these beautiful, gorgeous facilities like D1 and these other guys. And, and it's like, wow, they must know what they're doing. You can talk the talk. Can't walk the walk. No, and they can't squat the squat and nope. they can't run the run. And, and I, you know, it is what it is. But what we do is we train, we train champions. Yep. And, you know, if I go to a facility and look, man, first thing I tell the parents who come in is we're, we're training to win. We're training to win. And, and if I have a high school kid, we're talking about state. Every day. Yeah. I'm going to mention a state title because I remember when I was in high school. I just had a wrestling kid win a state title. Uh, yeah. So it's it's common. And that's what and people. my son won regionals. Yep. And that's the thing is people. Thomas got third in JV state. We're, we're, we're working at Cammy has a, a ring. Yep. Uh, what was that? That was uh, 2020. Yep. So it's. It, and that's a whole, whole different conversation. But, oh, the champion mindset. Yep. And that's. We'll go down a different rabbit hole a different day. Yeah. So basically box squats. Yep. Um. They're good. Um, just know how to do it. Know the time and place. And don't neglect other full range of motion movements yep. um, in favor of, again, it, it, box squats are a part of a, remember that whole, like, are you old enough where it's like every breakfast, is part of a balanced breakfast? No, it's not. Um, but basically, that's your sugar part. But basically, it's the part of a balanced breakfast, right? You need to have your other complementary accessories. But yep. If you're going to do a prime load, it's it's a box squat. Yep. And it's a, it's if your coach does it right, it is programmed out to elicit certain things. Yep. That's, That's it. it, guys. All right. So LegacyAtCarbon.com. LegacyAtCarbon.com. You can go there. Free session. If you want to train with us, uh, schedule a week. Come join us. We'll show you how to coach your kids. Again, it's LegacyAtCarbon.com on Instagram at Legacy at Carbon. And why is it Legacy at Carbon? Well, his facility in Illinois was called Legacy Performance. He sold that to come out here and do this. And now we are Legacy at a gym called Carbon Performance. So that way, not only do we just tell you a cool name, we told you how to get there. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. See you next time. That's not a game. used to have to go through dozens of bottles of vitamins, of supplements, just to get what I need. Look, I'm busy. I'm running multiple businesses. I'm coaching. I'm a professional bodybuilder getting ready for my first pro show. I don't have time to sit there and do all that. I got to go. I'm on the go all the time. That is why I created MTS Nutrition Immortal. Here's how they look. This, all it takes, this replaces dozens of bottles of supplements. So let me tell you exactly what this has. It has probiotics, greens, liver detox, joint support, cardiovascular support, and the most complete multivitamin, multi-mineral supplement ever created. If you have a busy life or you simply want more time to do the things you love and be able to travel by just taking one simple little pack with you, Immortals for you.